All right, guys. Projects is going a little crazy this time. Uh, it's Christmas time. So I'm going to cover how to trim a tree um, and keep it in balance and texture and some of the tricks I use. So let me get a little light on this, uh, this tree and we'll go from there. Hold on a second. All right. So the first thing you're going to do, let's say you have nothing and you have a, just have a space. So for us, you know, these windows open and my wife wanted a tree that sat there. Well, we already had this tree from a different house, so work perfect. These are um, almost nine foot ceilings, eight feet something, right? So this tree's, I forget what it is, but it's, you know, with the topper, it's working on almost nine feet tall, right? So this is a replica of a Spanish spruce. I don't even know if they make a Spanish spruce, but it's an imitation tree. And I like imitation trees for this type of work because you can, if you have a heavy ornament, such as this little die cast car right here, it has a lot of weight to it. Since this tree is made out of wire that's then covered with, you know, plastic branches or cloth or whatever these things are made out of, right? You can just bend these branches around to do whatever you want. You can't do that with a real tree. And for the most part, with a fake tree, you're not gonna have a, a gaping area, but this one does have a couple. So we'll address that too. I'll show you how to take care of that. All right, so you've picked a tree. You found the spot you want to put it in. When you unfurl your tree, you want it to look, don't just unfold all the branches and then not bend all the leaves out, right? So when you're bending the leaves and the little branches out, don't just make flat patterns. You know, tree, trees in real life, the branches grow up and down and sideways and inside out of each other. Try to re replicate that. Look for um, a tree similar to yours. And you know you can see that this thing, all the branches are going all different ways in here. So try to replicate you know, what a real tree looks like in nature. Next thing is your lighting. This used to be a pre-lit tree. They, enough of them burned out over the 25 years that we've had this tree that we pulled the lighting out. And it actually became a better tree because we were able to add more lights and more depth to the tree. By depth, I mean if you look down inside here, our lights go all the way into the middle of the tree. That adds the depth. Then we can bring the lights all the way out to the ends, right? And that gives you the width because the tree's lit at night. So the profile at night, if the, if the lights are in close, it's gonna be a silhouette of a narrow tree. You bring them all the way out to the ends like that, it makes the tree wide and full. So that's your first things. Get your lights in and out and keep them in balance, right? Uh, a lot of the DIY stores say how many bulbs you should be, you know, having on a tree. And if you've got a pre-lit tree, you can always add more bulbs, right? You can always add more strands to it, is what I'm saying. Next step is we like to add some texture. Um, my mother taught me a trick years ago. So we use uh, poinsettia, silk poinsettias, um, ribbon, you know, ri or bow ties ribbon bows sorry and ribbon uh you can get ribbon you can source it anywhere um i probably got this in the off season or something and uh took about three rolls to do this but you'll notice you know it's it's nice it's got an edging on it a little piping on there it's got some good colors and it has a holiday theme so what i do is i take the first ball or, or spool and i start at the bottom because the base of the tree is so wide and it'll probably take one, one and a half, maybe one and a half wraps because the tree's so wide and you use up so much ribbon. That'll get your base set. Then you go up to the top, stick a piece of it, you know, up in there somewhere and then just start unfurling it, right? Get it kind of, it's going to take you a few times to figure out how many spools you're going to need for your tree and what you like. This, this tree, like I said, takes three. So we spool it out. The top one gets probably about here. And then the third one is just like two layers, maybe three layers right in the middle. Then we adjust it up and down to get it balanced. If you look at, and I use my fingers as a gauge here, there, every layer is about the same. See what I mean? They're all about the same spacing. So there's a pattern to it, even though we're not trying to make it look like a pattern, we're trying to make it look like this ribbon just got furled up in the wind and got you know, wrapped around this tree through some miracle, right, of design. But really, there's a there's a pattern to it. You get it close, and then you can really tweak it. Once you start putting a bulb in place or something, you'll you'll put the bulb in, and then you'll 
push the ribbon behind it or something. It'll find its home and then, you know, miraculously it'll be done, right? It'll be, you know, the way you want it to lay out. After I've got the ribbon in, the lights in, we've got the width set and everything, the next thing that we like doing is using our hanging ornaments. Now these, most of these, the ornaments on this tree are glass. So this one is, um, it's a pearl essence and it has a lot of, they stand out quite a bit. So if you have something that stands out a lot, you wanna make sure that they're evenly spaced. I like to use a diamond and staircase pattern and I repeat it on all sides of the tree. So you'll notice we're here, we're here, we're here, and we're there, right? So there's a diamond pattern. Now, this diamond pattern repeats on all sides of the tree and it repeats in a staircase pattern. So it starts high, then it drops down, then it goes down again. Same thing right here. One, two, three. All the way around the tree, all sides have the same pattern. To add a little bit more to that, a little bit of pop, we like to go to silver, right? I got these in off season. Off season's your best time of the year to buy this stuff. Holidays are over. They're trying to blow this stuff out. You get it super cheap. So I think we have just as many. I know we have just as many of these as we do of these, and they're in that same diamond pattern. So you'll notice the pearlescence, then the silver, then the pearlescence, then the silver, so on, right? All the way around the tree. So you stand back and look at it in every quadrant of the tree, you see the pearlescence and you see the chrome, right? Or the silver or whatever you wanna call it. Then I go to the ones where there's multiple balls of you know the same color, like this gold. This is a, when you put one piece of gold on early, it's just like putting the silver, it really pops, right? So you gotta make sure that you space the gold evenly. Again, there's a triangle pattern or there's a diamond pattern. Gold, 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 gold in the top, right? Now, you might wanna change that up a little and switch your gold to something like a bell, right? Different color, different tone, even though they're both gold, Different tone, different texture, steel, glass, glitter, red, and just plain, right? So we have those in the exact same pattern. Everything is in the diamond and staircase pattern, even if it changes. So this we would consider a hanging ornament, right? This we would consider something along the same lines of something like this, right? Same texture, same colors, very close to the same colors, right? You're gonna find that you're gonna have gaping holes somewhere. This tree is not going to have as many, you know, this stuff applies to a real tree also, but the theory applies to a real tree. But let's say you have some gaping holes like this has a big spot in here that I've always had a hard time filling. So when I saw this, you know, Happy Holidays heart, I knew it would be, it was big enough where if I could stick that in there, it would cover a big area. It still didn't cover enough and I had to add, this was something, you know, I made with my kids as a craft hobby God, when they were in kindergarten or something. We made three of them, right? So this, uh, you know, then Kira went ahead and took a light, dropped it in there just to light it up, right? To add a little more to it. And then she decided, hey, let's put some silver out here, get some lights in behind them, let this light refract and light this up, right? So it's just all the little tricks that you can play with to get stuff going. Look at how she's got a light lighting up the Santa down there right, in the bell, or the clangor for the USC bell. Um, what else can I say about this? Uh, we had another hole, and again, top buying in off season. There was a big hole right here. I saw this ornament, I think it was about 45 or $60, I think it was 45 bucks, and it was in a Halloween store. I didn't wanna pay 45 bucks. I waited um, till the store you know, after the holiday, and I went back and I got this one, that guy right there, and this little guy right here for, I think, 22 bucks for all of them, which was a great deal. And then, you know, a tree should tell a story about whose family it belongs to, right? This tree has things like, you know, when Ethan was born, um, when Jeremiah was born, he's in here somewhere. When Jeremiah was born, Kira's got hers in here. Noah has the first word he ever spoke, which is abulo. I don't even know what that means, but... All these things tell a story. This is my mother's, my mother-in-law's ornament, right? Um, that's my favorite ornament from 20 something years ago. I bought it at Restoration Hardware 
or actually it was given to me, but this ornament here was given to me. My mother and I used to put these ornaments in their trees when I was a kid. And the same thing down here with Diane's. These came from Diane's mother's tree. So your tree should build, um, it should tell a story, right? The same thing with the, uh, the base covers, right? My mother-in-law, um, she hand sewed this together in the fifties. That one right there I bought with the boys, uh, for a special reason because I forgot to get a Christmas tree one year because I was trying to get a real one anyways. And then, you know, anyways, it's a long story. That's, uh, that's how you do it guys. I hope this um, helps you. You know, you can always do a train in the bottom. That's the last thing we have to do. We have a little electric train that goes down there. And then those twinklers go up in the base of the tree and kind of shine down and do one of those things, right? So just some of the tricks we use and uh, how we put it together. Uh, if you guys got any questions or comments, you know, always like and subscribe. We love that. So, uh, and we're getting close to our 100th video, which is kind of cool. So... It's kind of nice that it's happening during the holidays. Last thing, if you have a tree that needs to be seen from all sides, you need to do all sides. You need to make sure that every side is done just as well as the side you walk into and see all the time. Quiet. Do you hear what my wife and my daughter are talking about right now? They're being critics. And maybe this should be... Episode number 100. Oh, and she thinks it should be shorter.